Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Aviation Pro channel. Today we're going to look at GPS approaches. Now, um, some airports don't have ILS systems uh, because they simply cost money you know, to install and to calibrate. And sometimes the ILS system may be inoperative and then you need some kind of other kind of approach which will safely guide you down to the runway. That's why we have GPS approaches. So obviously you need an aircraft which has GPS capabilities. Uh, and in this case we're flying the Boeing 737NG uh, which has that GPS capabilities. Um, now there are many terms uh, in terms of GPS approaches. You have like RNAV approach, you have GNSS approach or um, an IN approach and they are all relatively similar. Um, but today we're going to take a look at an RNAV GNSS approach. It just basically means a GPS approach. Uh, and the RNAV and the RNP for example just relate to uh, the systems, the GPS systems that the aircraft uh, needs to have in its equipment in order to be able to fly the approach. Uh, because if you don't have a GPS, you're not going to be able to fly this approach. But you can kind of consider them the same. And then IN, the Integrated Approach Navigation System that's installed in this Boeing 737NG, basically means that you can use the approach mode that you would normally use for an ILS approach uh, kind of as an artificial ILS approach. So what it will do, it will use the data from the FMC, like the, the LNAV and the VNAV data. It will use that to kind of create an artificial localizer and an artificial glide slope. And in that way, you can, you know, just use the normal approach functions and see the normal approach indications on the BFD, uh, which makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, you could also just use LNAV and VNAV to uh, fly the GPS approach, but in this case we're going to use IN. Uh, to take a look at how to fly the GPS approach. So, first we're going to take a look at the charts. We're flying on the downwind leg of runway 24 at Prague Airport in the Czech Republic. Uh, Republic. And, uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the chart to see what kind of approach we're actually going to fly. So, as you can see, this is the instrument approach chart to runway 24 at Prague Airport. Uh, it's the RNAV approach, uh, GNSS, which is GPS, you know, satellite system. Um, so uh, we're going to take a look just from top to bottom what we see on this chart. You know it's very similar to an ILS chart. Uh, this box indicates that uh, the minimum temperature for viral VNAV operations is minus 15 degrees centigrade. Um, so if the temperature at the airport would be below 15 degrees centigrade, we would not be able to fly this approach. Why? Well, you can imagine um, in order for the FMC to generate an artificial glide slope, it's kind of have to use its own data and compare that to the altimeter of the aircraft. Now, when it's very cold, um, it often happens that the altimeter is not displaying the correct altitude exactly. Actually, when it's cold, it's likely that uh, you'll be flying lower than the altimeter will actually indicate. Okay, so that can be very dangerous. Uh, when it's very warm, it's the opposite. You will probably it's likely that you fly higher than the altimeter indicates. But when it's very cold, uh, the altimeter will show an altitude higher than you actually are. So, of course, when landing, that's very dangerous because if you are flying lower than you actually, um, you know, see on the altimeter, of course, you might hit some objects. So, that's why we have this minimum. So, we have to take it in count. Uh, currently, the temperature here uh, is just normal weather team. It's plus 10 degrees centigrade, so there's not much problem. And uh, then, of course, we can just simply uh, fly the transition to this approach. I'm just going to use heading select mode and kind of, you know, intercept the, uh, well, I wanted to say ILS, but we're going to intercept the um, final approach course uh, of runway 24 uh, with a heading of 30 degrees. Okay, so uh, let's take a look further on the chart. We can see uh, the flight path that we have to take. So we start at 4,000 feet. So let's start descending to 4,000 feet. And we're going to just fly a normal 3 degree glide slope, as you can see. The uh, course for runway 24 is 241 for this approach. And, you know, it looks very similar to the ILS approach. Uh, but we have to look at the minimums. It's very important. Um, we can see here that the obstacle clearance altitude or obstacle clearance height is for an LNAV approach, when we would only use LNAV and we would just use the DME to calculate our distance and, you know, to get the appropriate uh, altitude, uh, then the minimums would be at 15, 70 feet. Uh, but in our case, we're going to be using both LNAV and VNAV, you know, to create that artificial glide slope. So we can use 
little bit of lower minimums at 1479 feet. And I would select Barrow for this approach because we're going to be flying the VNAV using the VNAV system, right? So it, it, I think it's uh, you know quite important to select the Barrow setting of the minimums instead of the radio altitudes. So let's take a look at the FMC. We're just going to select the arrival um, at Prague and we're going to select the RNF to runway 24. Uh, you can also select the transition if you're really flying a route, but I'm just randomly flying around right now, so it uh, doesn't really matter. So RNF 24 is selected, and we're going to go to uh, the approach reference page uh, to check which speed we're going to fly in. Uh, let's click 40 flaps, 137. So final speed will be 142. Okay, so that's all you have to do, just like a normal ILS. Now, of course, for the radios, you would normally tune an ILS frequency in here, but in this case, you should not do that, because if you tune an ILS frequency, if you're going to uh, arm the approach mode, we'll just fly the ILS, but we want to fly a GPS approach. So what you can do here is either tune a uh, you know, frequency that you know, does not uh, you know, actually tune to any ILS approach in the area, or you can just tune two VOR stations, for example. You can tune the... Pra VOR station uh, Oscar Kilo Lima and then we can also uh, do that the same on the other radio so as long as you don't have an ILS uh, frequency in there that's very important okay so now we are flying in a 30 degree intercept course for runway 24 uh, what you have to do is activate what is in the legs page so you know for example you just enter in the first waypoint and then activate and execute, okay, so that the aircraft knows that you're going to fly the approach right now. And the next thing we're going to do is arm the approach mode on the MCP. And as you can see, different things are up. Uh, we're still in heading select mode and altitude hold mode. But we also have FAC, which stands for final approach course. So that's the course generated by the FMC of 241 degrees. And glide plat, uh, GP, standing for glide path instead of glide slope. Remember, for the ILS we had a glide slope, but in this case we have an artificially uh, generated glide slope, which is called the glide path, and the same as the VNAV path that we normally use. So now we're just going to stay on this mode and see what happens. And um, basically, just like the ILS approach, what will happen is that I'm going to first intercept the final approach course, and then at some point the uh, autopilot will capture the glide path generated by the FMC. So as you can see it's pretty simple. As you can see the artificial localizer comes alive just like an ILS approach and soon we'll be capturing the final approach course to there we go. And we're gonna select heading 241 degrees. And there we go. So right now we're flying uh, on the final approach course to runway 24 of 241 degrees and uh, now it, we have to wait for the artificial glide slope to come alive and it will soon come alive and we're going to start our descent to descend on the flight path for the, you know, the, the, the glide path uh, calculated by the FMC. Now since the VNAV uh, system will use um, the barometric pressure, it's very important to set the correct pressure. So currently the pressure at this airport is 1009. And as you can see, if I leave it at standard, or I would have you know, the incorrect value, I would be descending way earlier. But now I've entered the correct pressure, which is very important. And now we're going to start descending on the correct flight path. So there we go. We are almost capturing our artificially generated glide path. There we go. So now the aircraft is flying purely on its own data, alright, without the use of any ground-based navigation stations like ILS or VOR. We're just using our own equipment right here. Now, technically, this approach is a Category 1 approach, okay, so we have set the, I'm going to set the minimums right now. So as you can see, we're now on final approach to runway 24. The minimums are selected, and you will normally turn the autopilot off at minimums and the auto throttle just, just to continue manually, because it's... Uh, kind of considered like a category one approach but the autopilot will also disconnect itself at 100 feet radio altitude but we're just going to disconnect it at minimums and continue the landing manually and we carefully monitor if everything is going fine
500 feet. Approaching minimums. There we go, we're approaching minimums. Minimums. And disconnecting the autopilot. And as you can see, we are gonna we're coming in a bit high, and I'll explain why. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There we go. And we'll bring the airplane to a stop. So as you can see, we we're coming in a bit high, and that's because there's always a bit of discrepancy between what your scenery portrays in your flight sim and compared to what the data in the FMC says. Of course, in the real world, uh, data gets updated every uh, month, and you know there's not much of a problem. But in the flight sim, you will, might notice that you, there's always a little bit of an offset because you're not using the actual ILS that is part of the scenery you're using you're using the data of the aircraft and there's always a bit of a difference there okay so you should take that into account of course uh, you do not have to disconnect the autopilot at minimums per se I mean if you see the runway just continue visually uh, of course you do not have to wait at 100 feet radio altitude either to wait for the autopilot to disconnect itself um, you know it's much much safer as you can see in this example to actually just disconnect the autopilot when you see the runway in this case in real world it's probably a little bit different uh, but you know, if it's if the weather is really bad and you can't see the run runway just before minimums, yeah, of course, then you will have to disconnect the autopilot very late. But if you can see the runway, just disconnect it and continue manually. So I hope this gave you a little bit of an insight. Uh, you can also just use LNAV and VNAV to uh, execute this approach and uh, not activate the approach mode on the MCP at all. That's also another possibility. Uh, but we think this system is kind of neat to do. So, thanks for watching, uh, I hope you liked this video, make sure you check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash aviationpro and check out my website aviationpro.nl for a lot more uh, educative flight sim and advanced videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.